Hi everyone, welcome back to YouTube channel of this Raz and in this video we will discuss about the property of relations. So if you are ready, let's start. In our previous videos, we have discussed already the inclusions, the evaluations of the properties in the computation of our gross estate or the residence gross estate. And we have also discussed some properties, the additions to the gross estate, which includes the properties which are not physically in the hands of the dissident but were already transferred during his lifetime and also we have discussed about the exclusions the properties which are not subject to estate tax but it is common in a real world scenario wherein the dissident is a married one and he might have a surviving spouse now when the dissident is a married person who is survived by his spouse or her spouse, there is quite a complication in the computation of the his or her gross estate as we need to consider the exclusive or capital property of the surviving spouse. So in this video, we will discuss how to distinguish the property whether exclusive or conjugal or communal property of the husband and wife. Here are some rules in determining the property of relationship. So number one, it will always be based on their agreement on marriage settlement. We call this prenuptial agreement. Okay, so before a man and a woman marry, they could arrive in an agreement or a prenuptial agreement wherein they could agree whether certain properties will remain exclusive to them they could also agree that these properties are conjugal or communal to them this agreement ensures that in times when the two will be separated they will still have something left for them okay so that is a prenuptial agreement which is actually rare in the philippine scenario because normally in the philippines the man and the woman will not consider a prenuptial agreement they will just marry they will just let things unfold on their own so when time comes when they have to separate all their properties will be divided according to the rules existing in the philippines so again the first uh, rule in in determining whether the property is exclusive or conjugal or communal is based on the agreement on a marriage settlement or a prenuptial agreement now in the absence of this prenuptial agreement there will be two rules that we should follow and the date of marriage really matters on these rules so if the date of marriage took place before August 3, 1988, the rule is we will follow the conjugal partnership of gains. So why August 3, 1988? This date is the date when the former president Corazon Aquino signed and effected the family code. And it is said that if the marriage happened or took place before this date, then we should follow the conjugal partnership of gains. But when the marriage took place on or after August 3, 1988, the absolute community of property shall be followed. To now, any marriage from August 3, 1988 until present, we will follow the absolute community of property. Although there are a lot of similarities between these two rules, there are also some differences which we will discuss in the later slides. Okay, take note that when we say marriage, this is a legal marriage, not just the casual 
union or living in together with the man and the woman because when a man and a woman just live together they are not considered married they are just considered common law husband and wife so when they get separated all their properties wealth assets derived during this period of living together will just be divided equally among them or between them here are some general assumptions property for personal and exclusive use of either the spouse shall be exclusive to them however jewelry shall form part of the communal property so when i say property for personal and exclusive use of the spouse or either the spouse this means that this property is particularly for the exclusive use of either the husband or the wife for example when we say undergarments these are personal properties for exclusive use of either the husband and the wife when we say panties bras these are personal and exclusive properties of the wife okay but when we say inner garments like brief boxers for the husband these are also personal properties of the husband any properties for their personal and exclusive use shall be considered exclusive however when it comes to jewelries under the absolute community of property jewelries will always be a communal property regardless whether these properties or these jewelries are used exclusively by the wife or the husband under absolute community jewelries will always be communal property another assumption property acquired in exchange of exclusive property shall be exclusive for example if the husband bought a property using his exclusive money money that he earned exclusively and saved exclusively from himself whatever properties he acquired in exchange of those exclusive money will always be an exclusive property and also the same goes with a wife okay another assumption any property acquired during marriage are presumed to be communal or conjugal unless proven otherwise so when the couple bought something it is assumed that this property is the presumption is that the property that they bought belongs to them conjugally or communally so unless proven otherwise the assumption is the property was bought for their communal or conjugal use okay so let's go to the summary of the rules on the property of relations under conjugal partnership of gains and under absolute community of property so again recall that the first rule is there should be an agreement on marriage settlement in absence of that either the conjugal partnership of gains or the absolute community of property so here is the table which summarizes the rules whether the properties are exclusive or conjugal or communal for the husband and the wife so it is said that when the properties or property were acquired before marriage through gratuitous transfer it will always be exclusive under conjugal partnership of gains for example the husband has this property that he inherited from his parents before he married his wife so this property under conjugal partnership of gains will remain exclusive to that husband meaning the wife has no share from that property because that property is exclusive for the husband while under absolute community of property this property acquired before marriage through gratuitous transfer is considered communal so for example if the marriage happens in 2010 so that is after 19 88 right so the rule that we should follow will now be absolute community for example when the wife has a property 
inherited or received as a gift from her mother or father before her marriage to his husband. So this property under absolute community will be communal. Despite the fact that this property belongs to the wife, but in the eyes of the law, since they are governed by the absolute community of property, this property is acquired before marriage through gratuitous transfers will always be a communal property to both husband and the wife. The same goes with those properties acquired before marriage through onerous transfers. When I say onerous, this means that the husband or the wife acquired this property through purchase. Okay, when you say gratuitous, either through donation or through inheritance. But onerous, it means that the wife or the husband acquired these properties through purchase with sufficient consideration. Those properties acquired before marriage where the spouse has a legitimate descendant from a previous marriage that under both rules will always be exclusive to the husband or the wife. So let's say for example, A was previously married to B, to whom he had a daughter C. Now, B died and A is now considering of marrying another person who is X, okay? All those properties that A has accumulated from his prior marriage to be since they have child C will always be an exclusive property to A to protect the interest of C okay so when this person when A remarries or marries another person in the presence of X whatever properties that A has derived from his prior marriage will always be exclusive to him to protect the interest of his child from his previous marriage okay now let's talk about those properties acquired during marriage when the property was acquired during marriage through gratuitous transfer or title say for example donation or inheritance for both rules they will always be exclusive for either the husband or the wife but when the property is acquired through onerous title through purchase it will be conjugal or communal property when I say conjugal it means that the rule governing that marriage is a conjugal partnership of gains but when I say communal it means that the rule governing that marriage is the absolute community of property however if the purchase or the acquisition of this property is an exchange of exclusive property that will be exclusive property under conjugal partnership of gains and under absolute community of property let's say for example a is married to b b bought a farmland that's it b just bought a farmland there is nothing or no information as to whose money is used to buy this farmland. So, in the absence of such um, information, it is assumed that this purchase is for the benefit of both A and B. Therefore, the property bought, the farmland bought, is considered conjugal or communal under conjugal partnership of gains or under absolute community. Now, if the problem would say A and B are married and A bought a farmland using his exclusive money, okay, in exchange of exclusive money, then that property bought is considered to be exclusive of A because the money exchanged there is an exclusive property of A. You get that? Again, when the problem or the situation is silent as to whose money is used to buy this property, the assumption is conjugal or communal. But when there is a specific given or particular saying that the money used is from the exclusive property of this spouse, then that would be an exclusive property of that spouse. Another, if the property is acquired in exchange of conjugal or communal property, then that would be a conjugal or 
communal property. For example, the husband and the wife purchase a house and lot using the funds that they accumulated during their marriage, their wedding day. So the funds there is a conjugal fund, a communal funds. Therefore, the residential house and lot will also be a conjugal property of both the husband and the wife. And when this property is a conjugal property or communal property, it means that they will share the value of that property one half and one half. Okay? We also have here fruits or income from exclusive property. Let's say for example, A and B are married. Okay? And A has this exclusive apartment which he inherited from his mother inherited exclusive right so the property is exclusive and the property is rented so it means that the property is earning or producing income so the income derived from exclusive property of that spouse under conjugal partnership of gains will be conjugal property despite the fact that this rent or this fruit or income is derived from exclusive property under conjugal partnership gains it will be a conjugal property the income but under absolute community the fruits the income the rent derived from that exclusive property will also be exclusive so this is one of the major differences of the two rules another the fruits or income from conjugal or communal property will of course will always be conjugal or communal property so whatever rent whatever income whatever wealth derived from the use from the business of the husband and wife will always be conjugal and communal another salaries of the husband or derived from compensation from employment will always be conjugal property of the husband and the wife despite the fact that it is the husband who is working but of course he's working for the family therefore the salaries earned by the husband or the wife will be a conjugal property or communal property of both and not an exclusive property okay so let's have an example so I will give here a sample property and we will classify whether the property is exclusive or communal or conjugal under the two rules, okay? So example property, agricultural lot given by the mother of Juan, our dissident, prior to his marriage to Maria. So therefore, the agricultural lot was acquired by Juan as an inheritance or a gift rather from her, from his mother uh, prior to his marriage to Maria so before he married Maria he already had this property given to him by his mother so under conjugal partnership of gains this will be an exclusive property of one but under absolute community this will be a communal property of Juan and Maria another example the property is a second-hand vehicle bought by Juan. So this is an honorous title prior to his marriage to Maria. So the first example that we had just a while ago was actually acquired through gratuitous title. But in this case, the second-hand vehicle was acquired through honorous title. And again, under, partner, under conjugal partnership of gains, this is an exclusive property of one. But under absolute community, that is a communal property of one to end Maria. Okay, despite the fact that Juan bought this property before his marriage to Maria. Another example, we have a property is a commercial lot bought by Juan, our dissident, who is currently married to Anna and who was originally married to Maria, whom he got a daughter during his prior marriage. So in this case, Juan was previously married to Maria and they got a daughter now maybe they got divorced or they got separated and juan is married to anna so whatever properties juan owned before anna 
or during his prior marriage to Maria will always be exclusive under both regime. Why? Because to protect the interest of the daughter because the daughter here is uh, our uh, main uh, character that we should consider because to protect the interest of the daughter from the share in the properties, Juan should maintain that exclusivity of that property to protect the right of the daughter in the inheritance in, his, in her inheritance uh, from his father Juan. This property will maintain will be maintained as exclusive property of Juan, and Anna will share nothing from that property. Anna will get nothing from that commercial lot. Another example, a brand new motor vehicle gifted by the father of Juan as a dissident, our dissident, on account of his 50th birthday. So we have this brand new vehicle which was given gratuitously from his, the father. So this was acquired during marriage and through gratuitous title. So therefore, this is exclusive property of Juan. We also have another example, a family dwelling bought during marriage by Juan. So this property was bought by Juan, but it was, it is not stated whether the funds used here is from exclusive property of Juan or not. It is just said that the family dwelling, the residential house and lot was just bought by Juan during marriage. So therefore, under conjugal partnership in absolute community, this will be a conjugal property or communal property of the husband and the wife. Okay? Again, it is not stated in the example whether the money used in the purchase of this property was from one's exclusive property. Okay? That is why this is a conjugal property or communal property. Another example, we have clothing apparel of one. Clothing apparel is for personal and exclusive use of one. That could include shoes, shorts, pants, shirts, and inner garments or underwears. So this is for the exclusive and personal use of one. Therefore, this is exclusive property of one under both regimes. Okay? And we have also another example salary of the husband and the wife so their salary as i have said this will always be conjugal property or communal property of the husband and the wife so whatever amount gained derived earned by the husband and the wife and or the wife will always be a common to them a common funds to them okay another example a car acquired by juan a dissident through exchange of an old car which is exclusive to Juan. So there is an old car which is an exclusive property of Juan. This old car was exchanged by another car by Juan. So the property used to exchange this property, this, this new car, is an exclusive property. Therefore, this exchange property will also be exclusive property of Juan. It is as if there was just a substitution of property. Okay? Another example, investment in stocks using the conjugal funds of the husband. Of course, it is already said, the funds used was from conjugal funds. Therefore, it is conjugal property of the husband and wife under conjugal partnership of gains or communal property under absolute community of property. And we also have here rent income from exclusive property of Juan. So the rent is the fruit, the economic produce uh, derived or gained from the exclusive property of Juan. Therefore, under conjugal partnership of gains, this is, as I have said, a conjugal property. Any fruits, income, wealth derived from the use or business of an exclusive property will always be conjugal property under conjugal partnership of gains. But under absolute community, it will always be an exclusive property of the owner of such property. Okay? We also have here, last example, business income derived from a family business. It's a family business. Of course, it is a conjugal property or communal property under both regimes.
Okay, so those are the example. And to make a summary, always remember that these two regimes differ only from this highlighted or boxed items. Okay, so in your screen, you can see the differences of the two regimes. All others are similar to both of them. Let's have an illustration. Juan de la Cruz, Filipino, married to Maria de la Cruz, died leaving the following estate. So Juan and Maria are married. So we have here car acquired before marriage by Mr. Juan de la Cruz. So this car was acquired before marriage through Honoro's title. We also have here car acquired before marriage by Mrs. de la Cruz. We also have here house and lot acquired during marriage and it is silent as to whose funds is used. Therefore, our assumption is, yes, you're correct, conjugal or communal property. We also have here jewelries of Mrs. de la Cruz acquired before marriage and that is worth 200,000 pesos. We also have personal properties inherited by Mr. de la Cruz during marriage. Property acquired during marriage through gratitude's title and that is worth 550,000 pesos. We also have here land inherited by the wife during marriage and that is worth 1 million. Investment in stocks and it is not said whether the money used to invest is from exclusive or conjugal. Therefore, our assumption is, yes, you are correct, conjugal property or communal property under absolute community of property. We also have bags and shoes collection of Mrs. de la Cruz. This is a collection, bags and shoes. So for personal and exclusive use of the wife. So that is an exclusive property of Mrs. de la Cruz. We also have accrued salaries of Mr. de la Cruz prior to his death. Remember that any accrued interest income derived by the resident prior to his death will always be added to our gross estate. And we are asked, how much is the gross estate under conjugal partnership of gains and under absolute community of property? So there are two assumptions. So we will first solve this problem using the rules of conjugal partnership of gains, assuming the marriage happened before August 3, 1988, before the effectivity of the family code. We have here our solution. So we will uh, determine whether the property is exclusive or conjugal. Again, I will use the term here conjugal because this is conjugal partnership of gains. So, the car acquired before marriage by Mr. De La Cruz is an exclusive property. And we know that based on the table. So, that is 400,000 pesos. We also have here car acquired before marriage by Mrs. De La Cruz. So, this car was acquired by the Mrs. by Maria. And our dissident is Mr. De La Cruz. Therefore, this car is exclusive to Maria. Hence, we will not include that in the property of Mr. De La Cruz. Okay? And then we also have house and lot acquired during marriage. And it's again, we, it is not said whether the funds used are from conjugal or communal property. Therefore, the presumption is this is a conjugal property of the Mr. and Mrs. de la Cruz. We also have jewelries of Mrs. de la Cruz acquired before marriage. As I have said, jewelries will always be a communal property under absolute community of property. But we are talking here of conjugal partnership of gains. Therefore, the rules on before and after or during marriage shall apply. So the jewelries were acquired by Mrs. de la Cruz before marriage. Therefore, these jewelries are exclusive properties of Mrs. de la Cruz. Therefore, we will add nothing because our dissident here is Mr. de la Cruz and this jewelries is an exclusive property 
of the wife. Okay? We also have personal properties inherited by Mr. Juan during marriage. So the properties are inherited during marriage. Therefore, acquired through gratuitous transfer. And since it's gratuitous, it will always be an exclusive property of Juan or Mr. De La Cruz. So that is 550,000 pesos. We also have here land inherited by the wife during marriage inherited by the wife that means this is an exclusive property of the wife therefore we will add nothing because our dissident is mr de la cruz and not the wife we also have investment in stocks and as we know there is no given whether whose property whose funds are used to invest in the stocks therefore this is a conjugal property of the husband and the wife bags and shoes collection of miss la cruz this is exclusive and personal to miss la cruz therefore we will add nothing because our descendant again is mr de la cruz and accrued salaries of mr de la cruz prior to his death this is an accrued salaries of the husband and as we have mentioned salaries any fruits derived from labor from employment will always be a conjugal property or communal property of the husband and the wife so that means this is a conjugal property of both mr and mrs de la cruz so our total exclusive property is 950,000 pesos and total conjugal property is 2 million and 25,000 pesos so therefore our total gross estate is 2 million and 975 thousand pesos okay why do we need to separate the exclusive and conjugal properties it's because in the exclusive property the spouse the surviving spouse will not share from that but for conjugal properties the the wife miss la cruz will share one half of that so total gross estate is two million hundred seventy five now let's have the absolute community of property will the gross estate be the same let's find out so again we have to separate our computation for exclusive and communal property again i'm using the the word communal because we are under the rules of absolute community of property car acquired before marriage again anything acquired before marriage is a communal property whether through gratuitous transfer or onerous transfer it will always be communal property of the husband and the wife under absolute community in contrast to what we have in the uh, in the conjugal partnership of kings okay and the property acquired by miss la cruz is also a communal property of mr and mrs therefore we will add that to communal property so actually it is quite different from the first solution that we have just a while ago because in the first solution under conjugal partnership gains we add we added zero right because the property was an exclusive property of miss de la cruz under conjugal partnership gains but under the absolute community this car which is acquired by miss la cruz before marriage is a common property under absolute community of property and we also have house and lot acquired during marriage and again this is always communal property unless unless there is an indication that the funds the money used there is from the exclusive property of either mr la cruz or miss la cruz okay jewelries of miss la cruz acquired before marriage again again in the absolute community of property jewelries will always be always be communal property okay so it is different from the first solution that we have next we have personal properties inherited by mr juan de la cruz during marriage again this is a property acquired during marriage through gratuitous transfer or title so therefore this will be a, an exclusive property of mr de la cruz okay acquired during marriage through gratuitous title another we have land inherited by the wife during marriage 
so this is an exclusive property of the wife and not one so we'll not add that in our gross essay because it's a prop it's the property of the wife okay investment in stocks this will be a conjugal a communal property rather because there is no specification as to whose funds is used or was used to invest in the stocks and we also have bags and shoes collection of mrs de la cruz so that is also a personal exclusive property of mrs de la cruz therefore we will add nothing and accrued salaries of mr de la cruz prior to his death so again that is a communal property of the husband and the wife so therefore our total exclusive property is worth only 550,000 pesos while the communal property is worth 2,975,000 pesos and our total gross estate is 3,525,000 pesos so under absolute community it is higher okay than the conjugal partnership of gains and as i've said we need to distinguish which is exclusive and which is communal or conjugal because from exclusive properties the surviving spouse will share nothing but for communal properties or conjugal properties the surviving spouse will share one half of that okay so that's it i hope you learned a lot from this video and if you're new to this channel please subscribe click the bell so you'll be notified whenever i will upload new videos Thank you so much for watching. Bye!